Yo guys, Theo here on Common Sense. Today I'm going to tell you how to develop thick abs that show even at a higher body fat percentage. So we're going to be talking about genetics, individuality, what allows for the abs to show more even when carrying a bit more body fat, and ways to train to accomplish that. So I'm kind of improvising or I mean I know what I want to bring up but if it's a little bit over the place I'll do some kind of summary at the end. So first of all let's just state that there is a genetic individual factor. Some people are just luckier in the ab department meaning both in the way their ab muscles are shaped and in the way their body distributes body fat. So me, for instance, I am kind of lucky in the ab department that my muscle bellies here are kind of naturally outwards pointing and I tend to not store that much fat in my upper belly. The, the lower belly, the lower abs though, is my most stubborn area. Always the last fat to go when I cut them. Some always seem to stick around, but anyway, some people are luckier, but that does not mean that you can't get abs or that you can't get them to show more, even when carrying a bit more fat. So before we go into how to train the abs, let's just talk about what allows for the abs to show more, even when surrounded about <laughs> by a bit more fat. I feel like I repeat that a lot, but yeah. Um, it's in the title, right? Like thicker abs. Well, if you have these abs and this fat and you without putting on more fat would make the abs bigger, obviously they would show more, right? And it's like how I talked about that in general, uh, the more muscular you get, the more you get away with, yeah, the more body fat you can have while still looking quite jacked and aesthetic and have shaped your body, right? Like it's both because um, there are some areas we tend to all store less fat in before we get really overweight at least. Like even if you put on a little belly, for instance, if you had built big arms, they'd probably look quite jacked, right? Because yeah, it takes for you to get really overweight to store more fat in the arms, at least as a man. It's a bit different for men and women. But yeah, so there, there is that. But um, yeah, in general, not just getting thicker abs, just you getting thicker, you developing your whole body, that will help with the abs, to, will help the abs show more too. Like if you think about it, the muscles are beneath the fat and the skin, right? And the more, the bigger the muscles get, it's just pressing out against everything, right? So even when wanting the abs to show more, just st still think about developing your whole body, right? So that segues quite nicely into the next part about the training, because me, for instance, I have not, uh, in, in years, I haven't done any direct ab work whatsoever. I actually might on my cut, but um, more on that in another video. I haven't trained my abs directly in years, and I feel like compound exercises is all I need to develop my abs and core. Um, yeah, because even though I, like I said, I, ha I am kind of lucky there, but I can tell that I'm stronger in my core and that the abs are thicker since I started training. But this can be confusing because you've probably heard other people talk about this or if you go Googling for like, uh, will uh, compound exercises, can you get a six pack with only compound exercises or something like that, you'll find both sources that say that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, compound exercises is all you need to develop your abs and some that say that absolutely not you can't get a six-pack without doing isolated ab work so what i'd say is that um, focusing on compound exercises is going to be helpful anyway like it will train uh, your core uh, for, to some extent for everyone but again this effect of just you getting bigger you getting bigger um but for some people it might not be enough. That's when we come to the genetics and individuality again. That I might, uh, I seem to be um, getting away with just getting strong on compound exercises. But if you are one of those people that just have naturally flatter muscle bellies or you might store a bit more fat in your belly, you should probably do some isolated ab work. But so, uh, yeah, something I noticed by the way is, because th this is something I think probably is, um, well, how do you say? like static, some disturbance in the information about compound exercises and the core, I feel like the stronger you get, the more uh, weight you can um, move with your actually active uh, muscles, like that are, uh, aren't only working isometrically to keep you stable, you know, um, the more it will engage your core. I actually remember earlier, when I started training, I was getting stronger on the deadlift. For some reason, I remember specifically that when I was repping 150 kilos, so like, 330 pounds or whatever it is uh, on the deadlift, I just felt a way different core engagement. So I think that's key too, that yeah, if you're weak in these exercises, uh, it might not work your core as much. 
And so, yeah, get really strong on those. But so if we talk about how to train the abs more directly, th this is where I feel like it might it come a little all, all over the place, but I'll try to summarize at the end. So, um, first of all, one thing that a lot of ab, like if you look for a lot of ab workouts, it's just really high rep stuff, you know, uh, and that will work when you're really weak and have really undeveloped abs. But when you can do like over 30 reps on an exercise, it's no longer hypertrophy muscle building training. It's more some kind of endurance training. So um, yeah, uh, you could start out there, but then you should do some kind of weighted ab training. And just like your other hypertrophy training, keep it like in the eight to 12 rep range. Like not saying that you couldn't develop them at 20 reps too, but that, that's a good, um, good range to aim for. So we're talking about exercise selection. Uh, again, with the abs, uh, they are all, if we're talking about these, like the actual, you know, <laughs> the, the squares, uh, they are all one muscle and you can't isolate the upper or lower, but you can bias them. So I would like to have one, like moving uh, up to in, you know, so I, I'm not, um, phrasing this uh, good, but <laughs> some kind of crunching movement uh, to bias the upper abs more and some kind of um, leg racing movement to bias the lower abs more. And then you should get in some kind of rotation to work the obliques. That the obliques are of course not the actual abs, but they will feed into this effect of the muscles pressing out against the skin and fat. And also the obliques look cool, so you probably want to <laughs> develop them as well. So. Uh, if we talk about the first kind of exercise, um, I don't really like cable crunchers, never have, because it's difficult to get the form right, and especially as you get up to higher weights. Like the, the positive thing would be that it's easy to apply progressive overload, right? Because you can just move, move the notch, move up another notch on the cable machine. But especially as it gets heavier, it's difficult to get the form right. It will involve a lot of other muscles. So what I would prefer is some kind of uh, decline bench, you know, um, where you're having laying with your head down and somewhere where you can lock your feet, then crunch up. It's a long, long range of motion and you can overload it by just holding weight, right? And even better actually, because it's gonna be a problem probably too, at some point to um, like how much weight can you hold, you know? But so if you could have one of these like glute ham race uh, things, I'm sorry I don't have any videos for this, but it's because I haven't trained my abs directly in a long time, you know? One of these glute ham races, you can even lock your uh, legs in like that and you are uh, straight down almost, you know? Uh, and then, because I just think it would be easier to hold on to more weight because you come you come up to a more straight position. You aren't uh, as um, upright at the end of the range of motion. So it's just easier to hold on to more weight, I think. So doing something like that within the eight to 12 rep range and progressively overloading just the weight you're holding would be a good option. For the lower abs, I like when you're weaker, I like um, reverse crunches. And there are like wrist weights, you know, so you could uh, you could overload that too, but at, uh, at, it's, it, <laughs> there aren't uh, that many like super heavy things you can put uh, on your feet, right? So at a certain point it might not, um, yeah, it would be difficult with progressive overload. So something like hanging leg races would be nice where, where you can hold the dumbbell uh, with your feet or you can even attach, depending on where, you know, wrist weights would work too, you know, but um, yeah, I think I, I would prefer to just hold the dumbbell. Uh, and then, uh, because of course, if you do just, with are thinking body weight, uh, hanging leg races, um, if you have your knee bent, uh, it's of course easier because it's a, a shorter moment than if you have your um, legs fully straight. But if you're gonna have a dumbbell, uh, you're probably, it's gonna be difficult probably to keep the legs straight all the time. Just think about some people when they do the hanging leg races, like when you do those, you'll always work your hip flexors to some extent, but some people that's almost all they do. They just raise up the knee, but think about what the, abs functions are, they, they flex the spine, right? So if, as you raise the knee, you have to feel like you're kind of, yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> it's not a good angle to show this, but not only that you're raising your knee, but also tucking your stomach a little bit. So if you can, this you can load, you know, you just, uh, it depends on what shoes you have, right? But you just, um, you're just limited by the dumbbells you have access to. Then for the obliques, I guess, um, hmm, I guess doing these kind of wood shopper things or when you just have a, well, I like this one. And when you have a cable like this, 
So you should grab the cable and walk, walk out a bit so that the cable is already a bit out and then just twist like that, you know, work one side at a time. This one you can overload for a long time on the cable machine. And just make sure here again, some people when you see they do them, they move their arms too much. Now we're all of a sudden doing a lot of chest and shoulders and stuff. St think about engaging it from, from the side of your belly. Mm. The, the, the arms are like supposed to lag behind you. They are just, this is just a hook that's attached to the cable and it's a core that moves the weight. So we're talking about how much and how to structure this. Like I said, keep it probably in the eight to 12 rep range. It's not like you can't go above, but let's say above 30 would be a waste of time at least. Um, three sets of each or something. And if you trained abs, if you do, I would suggest that you don't have like a designated today I train abs day, you know, that you get it in, in other workouts. And it doesn't really matter if it's an upper or lower body workout. But, um, you know, it's the, the rule, 10 to 20 sets is a pretty good rule for most muscles. It's going to be a little bit different between muscles and between individuals, but um, something like that. And then you can just split it up. So you do one or two, uh, two exercises on this workout, one or two on that, one or two on that, three to four times per week, you know. Uh, I think that's a better option probably than doing like a lot of ab work in a day. It's actually quite exhausting to train abs, like centrally too, you know. Um, and yeah, it might interfere with your core stability on other exercises. So I'd throw it in, um, like not, not necessarily towards the end, but at least uh, when you're done with your big compounds somewhere there in the workout. So I hope this, so let's try to summarize then, uh, get bigger, get, get bigger, get stronger in compound exercises that will work your core to some extent. For the person that needs more ab work, do some kind of up to in uh, crunching movement, some kind of leg racing movement, some kind of twisting movement, three sets of each, um, twice per week if you would do all, uh, all the ab exercises at a time, but preferably just spread them out a bit more uh, during our other workouts. The abs recover quite quickly, so don't worry too much if you trained, if, especially when you spread it out, like if you did one exercise yesterday, you know, for the abs, uh, it's not too soon to do one or two exercises the next day. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I hope you develop thick abs so you can just stay a bit fat and have them anyway. And yeah, guys, comment, like. All comments and likes help support the channel, so I appreciate it a lot. Please subscribe for more content about fitness, fasting, building muscle, losing weight, aesthetics, self-development. Yeah, all kinds of stuff, guys. Uh, I need to go to the gym now. Okay, peace.